I pretty much immediately start hitting on your mom. So that's the starting line of the wood grain wagon. And there's yeah, the finish line. That's not the oh. finish line. line. That's just on. them. Two cars ahead. Oh, that's just two cars. <laughs> well, he definitely probably won. <laughs> so. So I had a lot of interest in what is the origin story on my wife, the Mrs. Val. And uh, so just to give you a little bit of understanding of where the whole Sugar Mama thing came from, when Kyle did an interview with me in my origin story, because people are interested where and how I came about, uh, one of the things that uh, Kyle said to me was after I said that I lived off of my wife, income while I got the shop started he said oh so she's kind of like a sugar mama your mom is the one that made all this stuff happen really because I would have been just living in the shop uh, eating bologna sandwiches and probably be half dead by now so <laughs> if it wasn't for her I you know uh, so I had somebody my wife was supporting me there so I was willing to in order to get the business going is making nothing nothing Yep. So not mandatory, but Sugar Mama will definitely help. Um. So that's where that whole deal Sugar Mama came from. And we just kind of played up on it because, yeah, she's, she's mine. You know, she, took, she helped take care of me and do all that stuff. So we're going to do the origin story on my missus. And uh, then you're going to find out what the problem is with wagons. What's up guys? I'm Kyle here on the Steve Morris Engines YouTube channel. Thanks for tuning in. This is my mother, Valerie Morris. Say hi, Val. Hi, Val. If you're new to the <laughs> channel, this is my mom. She piloted this car during sick week. There's a ton of video, a ton of footage about that. Super cool. Um, mom, take us through the very beginning. So where were you born and raised? The very beginning. Oh, we're going way back to the start. Uh, right here in Muskegon, Michigan. Uh, I guess that was kind of a vague question. <laughs> yeah, it was a vague question. Yeah. So you're born and raised here in Muskegon, Michigan. Yeah. Tell me about how you got started in racing and a little bit of your childhood. Sure. I was me and my sister, so my dad had no sons. And I think I was the token son that he has turned me into, kind of. Not in today's standards, but uh, he... <laughs> So I was into go-karts and snowmobiles and mini bikes, not dirt bikes like you were into because I had a little common sense and so, and fear. Um, but mini bikes, snowmobiles, go-karts, you name it. Uh, one of my coolest Christmas gifts was a slot car track when I was young. Mm -hmm. um, went to the races. So my dad, when I was growing up, my dad owned a shop, a repair shop, so he did body work, engine work, uh, everything, and just hung out at the shop, hung out at the races, drag races, circle track races, you name it, uh, car shows, what I grew up doing. Gotcha. So you kind of grew up around it, so that's what got you into the whole racing thing. So, and did Grandpa race at all? N he did when I was very, very young, but other than that, uh, he had a partner that he raced with that, that drove and he had the car, um, Steve Eadie at APS, shout out to him. But so I hung out at the track with those two guys. Um, then when I turned 15 and took driver's training, I was interested in racing myself. I always wanted to get out there. Junior dragsters were not a thing when I was young. Mm -hmm. um, so about... 15, 16, started really thinking about it. And the first time I went down a drag strip was in my mom's car. So it was at Central Michigan Dragway back then, it was called that. And uh, it had rained and they did not have a track blower. And so they wanted street cars to drive up and down the track to help dry it off faster. And my dad's, I think it was 15, my dad said, get in your mom's car, go. So I jumped in my mom's car and went down the track and ended up signing up for the race that day and that was the first time down the track and I was hooked. 
So your very first race car was actually just your mom's daily. Right? Sure and was, I have yeah. some pictures here and we'll put them up on the screen, but you'll notice, and dad wanted me to point this out specifically, that who you're lined up against is in fact a wagon. A wood grain wagon at that, yes, yes. This that's, is the only time I'm gonna jump in here. We'll show the other picture. So that's the starting line of a wood grain wagon. And there's yeah, the finish line. That's not the oh, finish line, line. that's just on. them. Two cars ahead Oh, that's just two cars? Fit. Well, he definitely probably would. <laughs> so. We'd have to see the, the recap on that one, the instant replay. So, you, so you it, don't it, know what happened at the end of the track. It, Maybe it, I get past him at the end. <laughs> could have been, could have been. So it's obviously you have passive aggressive tendencies towards the wagons. You think so. Deep because the deep seated yeah. content, con, yeah, discontent, content. yeah, before anything with wood grain. Mm -hmm. It's been a hard road, road for you to hoe, I know. Yeah. Anyways, moving anyway. on from that. Yes. Um, what was your very first race car like that was yours that you specifically raced? So my very first race car was a 73 Nova. I was 17 when we got it done. I think it was 16 when we started it. We built it, my dad and I, in a garage at our house from the ground up. Um, it had a vinyl top and pulled all the vinyl top off and pulled all, pulled, stripped it bare, um, did all the work on it, built the engine. Nice. These pictures too. Every. So covered that. Um, so that, yep. Sharp looking car. It's nice. Thanks. Yeah. Good first car for sure. Yeah, it was. So that car I ran, most of my cars I ran for two seasons. So that car, the 73 Nova, I ran from um, like when I was 17 to 18. And it was, went, we went, started out 11s and then dipped into the 10s. I think the fastest that car went was 1090s and a quarter. Gotcha. Cool. So we got some more pictures here. You and Grandpa together. You at the racetrack. And I see a red Chevelle. Yeah, my second car yep. was a Chevelle there. And that car went low tens and gotcha. then we dipped into the nines with that one. I was gonna say that one looks a little bit faster than the, yep. than the Nova. Yep. Big old scoop on it. Yep. So you raced that car for how long? So that we raced for about two seasons. Two seasons, and then you moved on to this car right And then we moved on to the Vega. Gotcha. Pink and black. It started out pink and black. I think when we got it, it was that color. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we painted it. Nice. nice. In our garage. Well, Grandpa painted it in our garage at home. Gotcha. And then I have another picture here. Oh, you said it's the same car, right? Yeah, that's the same car. Yeah, nice paint job on that car. It's yes. cool. So we, that car was, we dipped into the eights with that one. So that one went low nines and high eights in that car. So progressively getting faster. So then how old were you when you were racing this car? So I was, uh, I think I just got in college. So it was probably 19 at the time. 19, 19 was going fast for a 19 year old, especially back then. Yeah. But it just keeps getting faster as I know. And then what do we have here? That's me. You lined up against the drags. Bill Mitchell. I don't know if Bill anybody Mitchell. knows Bill Mitchell, but he's been around forever. Mm-hmm. Some more pictures. Look at that tire all wadded up. That's right. Cool stuff. You working on the car? Yeah, I think I was probably either putting on or taking off the valve covers. There's a lot of that. Oh, nice. That must have been dual carb deal. So that must have been on the Camaro? Yes. Yep, so after you had that car, you moved on to the Camaro, mm -hmm. which was going how fast? So we started out we, with low nines, or sorry, started out low eights, and then the fastest I went in that was a 790s, 796. Nice, super fast, especially for what year was this? That would have been 90, that picture there, well, it was probably, it would have been 97, 96, 97. 96, 97, nice, so going fast. Way early. Gotta love it. Got some more pictures here. Had the car in white and black. Was it white first or black first? It was black first and then we painted it white. Super cool. And how long did you race that thing for? So that we had for two two seasons. My goal was always, so we, we dipped into a little bit of Top Sportsman. Otherwise I just did bracket racing. Um, we dipped it a little bit of Top Sportsman, but 
weren't quite fast enough to be competitive at that time. So the goal was to just step it up a little bit more, um, which is when we hired Steve Morris. Yeah. So this, all yeah. this that we were talking about, this is keep in mind that this is pre dad. Yes. So this is all happening. Her and her dad, my grandpa. Yes. So tell us a little bit about why he's in the picture and how that happened. <laughs> we were just talking about that. So, uh, we, we, progressively going faster. Uh, the goal, my goal was to do top sportsman. My dream was always to do pro stock. Um, but that's a big deal, a little out of our budget and out of our, uh, realm, but top sportsman was reachable. Um, wanted to go a little faster and the engine builder at the time would call this guy that he knew that used to work on pro stocks, um, and ask for advice. And we're like, well, why don't we just go directly to that guy? So we called, Steve Morris. My dad called Steve Morris and had conversations with him. And um, first time I met him, he remembers meeting me at a racing banquet. I don't remember that. I remember him showing up at the racetrack and introducing and being introduced to him. And um, he started building, building our engines and working on our program. Uh, we eventually sold the Camaro and had one season, not even a full season, probably half a season in a top dragster. Um, and then we got married. <laughs> so the rest yeah. is history, as they say. Yeah, pretty much. I pretty much immediately started hitting on your mom. Yeah, I know. That's, that's typically how that works. <laughs> now, I was clueless because I was focused on racing and didn't understand. I didn't know how to flirt. Didn't know when people were flirting with me. I was just doing my thing so yep so went through all that got that done at a, how and how old were you when you were going sevens in that thing the, uh nineties. that would have been 23 24 23 24 that's how old i am now so. i know and you're almost in the you're sevens. right there i know so for those of you that are watching my mom got in the sevens before i did yeah. just so you know and actually uh your dad's first time down the drag strip was in my car we were having issues and trying to explain to him what was going on and he wasn't quite getting it. And my dad said, well, why don't you get in and take it down the track? And he was like a little girl. He was like giggly and oh my gosh, okay, okay, okay. It was really funny. And, he's a, and I'm like, well, don't break it. And he's like, it's okay. If I break it, I'll build you a new one. <laughs> oh, good thing he knows the guy who can fix it. Right, right. So yeah, so his first time down a racetrack was in my car. I went at 850. Eight, 850. 850 in a car. 150. That, yeah. <laughs> In a car that should have been going. It was scary. Eight O's at that point. <laughs> Probably would have been scary if you're not used to driving anything. You just hop into that. That's a monster, yeah, for sure. So all that happened. You guys ended up getting married. That's the end of that story. What? What? So what happened? Why did you quit racing? Um. So back in the the eighties and nineties when I was racing, I there were very few females in in racing in you know, as a teenager, early 20s, I thought, oh, I'm going to do this forever. I'm going to race forever. Um, there wasn't, you know, there wasn't a Brittany Force. There wasn't an Erica Enders. I think Eric, I think Erica Enders was maybe junior drag racing at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's where we were. And there just wasn't, it's just, it's, you have to make the priority. And at that point, getting married and having kids, you can't really race full time and, and have kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can, you can be a dad and do that, but you can't physically have kids <laughs> and, and you can't take a year off to, uh, to have a baby and then get back in it. It just, it's just not practical. And, and my priority was my family and I, I don't regret that at all. I mean, I got you. So I know, I know you got totally me, you got Caitlin, yep. Tyler. It did end up coming for full circle anyways, because now me and Caitlin are out of the house. And so now we move on to this thing, which just happened. When did we, when did we first announce this car? And that she was going to drive it. Uh, right before sick week, right before sick week last year, this year, this year. Well, the sick week was 2024. Right. So, I mean, you guys know, if you guys don't know sugar mama, we've had the car for a while. We built it up for my mom to drive. She takes it on sick week of this past year so this last sick week completes the events does good um finished 
got all the bugs sorted out so that this thing is ready to give away to its new home. So give us a quick little recap on what it was like to get back into racing after taking a break for so long. And then hopping into this, which like this isn't a seven second car, but it's definitely no slouch and you've been not racing since basically I was born. Yeah, so it's 25 years since I'd been in a car and in, in no testing. So the car is untested, the driver is untested, and it's a big plat. I mean, Sick Week is a big platform to just jump in without any practice, without any testing, without anything. So I felt a little bit of pressure um, it, to, to get in it. And it's, it's a little bit different. Things have changed. Some things are the same, like doing the burnout, staging, that kind of process is kind of the same. But I, I mean, I had dual carburetors on slicks with the power glide, like totally different than drag radials on EFI and the turbo 400. Like it just, mm -hmm. it was a little bit different process. I think you were getting a little frustrated with me because I, I wasn't necessarily, I was falling into old habits. Like he's trying to get me to line up outside of the groove and you just don't do that in a slick car. Like everything in me would pull me back to the groove and he's like trying, trying to get, get me so. over and I'm like, I can't do like, I think it was day four by the time I finally lined up where you told me to line up and, or I'm not like trying to give it gas to try to clean, clean out the carburetor, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, it was a learning curve. It took me, it took me till day four before I finally relaxed and was like, okay. So then by day four, you know, going down the track, it's like, it's taken kind of a long time to get to the end here. It's <laughs> feeling a little slow. Um, but we got acclimated to it because I mean by day four we've made I mean we made at least two passes every day so yeah <clears throat> we've made like eight passes at that point so we were getting pretty by the end of the week we were practically professional practically Again. professional I think I had probably 12 passes on the car the whole time from 25 years of not racing and I think I got 12 passes that mm -hmm. week so it was a uh, yeah, it was awesome. We finished the race. I mean, like I said, got all the bugs sorted out. And uh, everybody made it home in one piece, even though Dad unfortunately hit the wall. Well, we made it home in one piece. We made it home in one piece. He made it home with one less quarter panel. So yeah. You and I finished the event. That's right. I finished so, in the back seat. He finished he, in the he, back he seat. He finished in the back seat. <laughs> I was in the back so, seat. So the drive, um, we had issues the, the first day. The tire is rubbing on the, on the frame. frame. All right, so uh, driving down the road, everything's sweet, everything's cool. Uh, one fan gave up the ghost. Again, for the first two days with the drive, because again, an untested car, but after that, this thing was like a million bucks on the drive, no yep. problem. Um, by the last day, and you said before, it's where we should have been on the first day, but the last day going down the track was pretty flawless. If we'd had two more days, we could have turned it up and been where we wanted to be, so. Gotcha, exactly. So we've covered, the past and everything that's come up to this point, we covered what's going on basically now. So what's the next thing that's going on? What's the next car? What's the next project that we're working on? Well, I think everyone's seen, if you haven't seen, check it out. Kevin Smith, KSR Racing's video and our video. Um, Steve decides that we're going to step it up and get this 2010 Camaro and put an SML in it. And who knows how fast we'll go, but that is definitely something that I'm going to share with you so you can be a family car. <laughs> Steve's holding up a sign that says new car 630s. I don't know that I'm ready for 630s. Kyle might be, but I don't think I am. <laughs> yeah, so we're working on that whole new project that's going on. And she said, she said the magic words, which are, it feels kind of slow or she's getting used to it. So we're going to end up going 890s with this car before we give it away. This awesome car could be yours. We're giving away Sugar Mama. It has been a great car and someone is gonna have a lot of fun with this car. We have these great shirts plus many more. Just go to the stevemorrisengines.com website, click on apparel, and for every $5 you spend, you get one entry for this great car. All the rules and regulations are right there on the website. No purchase is necessary, but just go check it out. We're going to end up going testing with this probably in April. So you guys would look for some footage on that. Um, I, I think it would be a shame to do anything more with this car. Um, yeah, it, it is a good car for 
it's a good, I don't want to say no race car is low maintenance. No car that you race is low maintenance. I will say that, but I think this is a good solid, it's a good solid car and you don't want to, I don't want to say screw, you can't screw it up by making it go faster, but I don't want, I want to say you don't want to, screw it up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a good car for, it's in its final form now. Yes. At least for us. The new owner can do whatever he wants. He can put a tube chassis under it and an SMX if he wants to. <laughs> if he wants to. If he but, wants to. But it's good the way it is. Yeah, so we ended up getting this car from KSR, which is, I mean, this chassis is basically an unlimited platform. It's a dual frame rail, tube chassis car set up for small tires and big power. So we can go as fast or as slow as you want it to go. So, I mean, I'm thinking, like, we just get this thing out. We'll, like, make a wastegate tune just to make it go like 850s and then and the, the dog is licking and making he, weird noises and he loves me i know we're all affectionate today i think he likes to get to the camera he attention. likes to be on the camera too that's right so we've got that car from kevin over there shout out to kevin once again you know um we'll go like 850s that thing on the wastegate and we can go as fast as bottom sixes with it yeah. so i want to give some shout outs too because um Chris Koslick at 660 Raceworks set this up amazing. Like that was one of the things that I was worried about was I the that Camaro was old pro stock. It was Jerry Haas pro stock car and I never had to drive that. Um it went straight down the track pretty much every time and Chris set that up and I did not have to drive this car at all. Even I think with the fastest pass was um the day before testing actually for sick week testing and it went um it went eight, or sorry, not eight. Nine, it went nine, nine forty-four. That no, it went nine twenty-four. Nine twenty-four. Yeah. We, oh yeah. Sorry. Nine yeah. It went nine twenty-four, and it was just straight as could be, no issue whatsoever. So, um, Chris Koslick, six sixty Raceworks, did an awesome yeah. job. Um, Torque Storm. Yeah. Torque Storm got us going. Uh, like Twin said, superchargers. Yep. Yeah, we're gonna be. This will be eight nineties, no problem. Um, Deal Brothers. And their cameras, yeah, Nick and David Deal. Their sound system, thank you. So it it is it is a it's a good car. Mm -hmm. No complaints on the car whatsoever. There's so many things that we could go over. Here's just a few. Here's me at the races with Steve, Edie, and my dad. It was pretty much an every weekend thing in the summer. I'd just pull in and pick up Steve, and we'd hit the track. Steve always made me feel like I was part of the team, one of the guys. So he was kind of influential in me sticking with it, and obviously my dad was number one, but Steve was pretty close be just because he was stuck with me the whole time. And there's Steve and the car that he and my dad had together. And this engine is the only engine I've ever built. First engine and only engine I've ever built, but I did it all on my own. It was a 350 that we put in this really cool 56 Chevy. And there's me and Don Garlitz. Now, is he asking for my autograph or am I asking for his? Nobody really knows, do they? And back when big money bracket racing was just getting started, um, this was a $50,000 race, which back in 1996 was a huge deal. Um, but here I am at the race, and I was the fastest door car at 838. And that wasn't even the fastest I went. So it was pretty fun to do that. So that pretty much covers the Valerie Morris origin story. So thanks, in a, Mom. In a nutshell. Yeah, thanks, Mom, for giving us the origin story and giving you or giving us some backstory on what's going on over here with you. So I'm Kyle, Steve Morris Engines. Thanks for watching. <laughs>